So Rotobrush 3 is now available in After Effects, and conveniently enough, we just launched a commercial that uses it in pretty much every scene. So I wanted to go over how you can use Rotobrush to recreate some of the shots that we made in this commercial. Then finally, I'll show you some unique and creative ways that you can leverage this newly learned effect. But you're probably most used to seeing it like this, placing a piece of text or motion graphics or something behind your subject, but still in front of the background so that it feels like it's actually in your scene. Thankfully, Rotobrush 3 makes this process super easy and here's how you do it. The very first thing you wanna do is actually duplicate your footage. The reason you wanna do that is because when you cut out your subject with Rotobrush, everything else is gonna disappear and we're left with just the subject but we still want that scene behind them. So if I was to like pull this out into 3D, this is essentially what we're doing. Placing the exact cutout onto the background, and then when we put stuff behind the subject, but in front of our background, we're gonna end up with a convincing effect. So now that your footage is duplicated, highlight the top layer and go up here to this tool that looks like a paintbrush. This is the Rotobrush tool. Now with this selected, we can double click on our footage, which brings it up here in a new window. And now the easiest way to select your subject is just to click and drag to paint over the areas that you want to include. Here in this view, a new menu pops up here and we can select which version of Rotobrush we want to use. I'm going to make sure that version three is selected. Now, as far as your mask itself is concerned, it's not going to be perfect. So keep highlighting the areas that you want to include until it gets it. But it's probably going to overcorrect a little bit and include some things that you don't want it to. So to remove a section, hold Alt or Option to turn it red and you can remove things that you don't want to include. Another little tip is that if you hold control or command and then click and drag your mouse either up or down, you can change the size of your brush to make either larger or smaller detail changes. You can also adjust the brush size from this menu over here. Now, the final thing that you should be aware of is that if you've got a subject with a lot of hair or other areas of high detail, that's where you're gonna wanna bring in the refine edge tool. So go back up to the rotor brush icon and then click and hold down until this larger menu appears and you can select it from here. And with this tool, you simply wanna go over all the troublesome areas that require a little extra TLC and boom, there you go. It's like magic. This section will appear differently showing black areas that are not included while white areas are included. And it'll also show grayish areas for things that have a partial transparency. You can also change up the way that your selection is displayed to you with these buttons down here. Now, once you have a selection that you're happy with, you can press play and watch it through to see how well it sticks. If you've ever used Rotobrush versions one or two, then you should notice that three is gonna be a lot faster and way more accurate. But if you do notice that it still starts to drift away from your subject, then go to the first frame where you see it drifting and make an adjustment to bring it back in line. This will help to teach it what you actually want it to include. And this is also a good time to say that you should probably have the basic pieces of your editing done. Like, I mean, you should know exactly how long you want this piece of footage to last for so that you don't have to roto out this much stuff, you just have to roto out this much stuff. And speaking of your larger edit, if you actually wanna see how this is working within your larger composition, but you don't wanna to commit to any changes yet, you can actually just jump into this other composition tab over here and the effect will be taking place already. I'll just hide my bottom layer and we can see exactly what the roto layer is doing. And we can already place things like our text or motion graphics between these two layers to see how this effect is working out. Now, if it's looking good, but it's not quite perfect, then you can try a couple different things like highlighting the roto brush layer and in effect controls, you should see a bunch of different options that you can influence. You can increase or decrease the feather, which basically just changes how sharp or soft the edge of your selection is the contrast, or you can even shift the edge, basically keeping everything the same, but moving everything out or in, in comparison to your subject. Then there's reduced chatter, and chatter looks like this, and is usually in areas of really high detail, or it's having trouble figuring out whether something is included or not. And it goes back and forth a lot of different times in that section. Decreasing the chatter will also increase the blur, so it's a bit of a trade-off, but it's still way less noticeable than the chatter itself. Then finally, you can choose whether or not to allow the selection to incorporate motion blur, which basically just means that the sections which are moving faster will appear softer when they're moving. A situation where this would come in handy is if your subject's arm is quickly moving, but the mask is super sharp like this, and it doesn't quite look right. Allowing motion blur to be incorporated is probably gonna make it a little bit more convincing. Then finally, you have some more detailed controls over that motion blur. You can increase the number of samples, which will basically just increase the quality of your result, but also will take more time to process. Shutter angle just controls how intense the blurring is. And then you have a general checkbox for higher quality, along with an option to decontaminate colors around the outermost part of your selection. 
But now that you have the roto brush complete and you're happy with the results, make sure that you freeze it. The reason that you want to do this is because right now After Effects is more or less making all of these calculations on the fly. And even though it's rendering and saving some of that detail here, you can see by the green line, it's on a constant rotating buffer and it's taking away system memory from your computer and more specifically other parts of your edit. Freezing your work lets After Effects save what you've done while also freeing up more fast processing power for other parts of your edit. You just need to let it run through and do its thing. So go make a coffee and then come back when it's done. And if you ever want to make changes to your roto in the future, just unfreeze and there you go. But now that you've successfully created this effect, I wanted to show you some of the really creative ways that you can use it. First, like we've already mentioned, you can place down elements behind your subject like text or motion graphics by just placing them in between these two layers. And if you've tracked the base original layer of your scene with a 3D camera tracker, you can actually just drag in some motion graphics, set them to 3D and have them fully a part of the 3D world of your character. I've actually already done a couple tutorials about how to do 3D camera tracking. Another thing you can do is grab a motion graphics texture and place it below your rotoscope subject, and then make sure that it's larger than your subject. Then set your track mat to the rotoscoped layer, and now your subject outline is taking on the visuals of the motion graphics. We actually used this exact effect at the very beginning of the commercial, like for example with the actress's pants. And here's my personal favorite, you can use this to quickly make a really cool seamless transition. Start by dropping the opacity of your background clip to zero so that only the rotoscoped part is showing. Now move forward a bit and select the rotoscope subject and keyframe it to just remain in this position. Then move a few frames backwards and move them completely off screen. Add an easy ease and use your graph editor to really make them settle into the final position. And then you can keyframe the background to fade in. And the result is that you've got this, a cool effect where it feels really fluid and natural. And if you export this with a transparent background, you can actually just place it over top of any other piece of footage and it just works as a transition. And you can also use a preset transition on either the subject or the background for the same effect, but with a totally different feel. And finally, don't limit yourself to what you can actually put behind your subject, because it doesn't just have to be a still image or a video file. If you have other After Effects project files like templates or 3D text projects, you can actually drop an After Effects project into an After Effects project and place in that final composition within your scene. I'll leave a link to all of the elements that I mentioned, and you can also check out this really detailed tutorial on how to 3D track stuff into your scene. I'll see you over there.